you're looking for trouble, you came to the right place. If you're looking for trouble, just look right in my face. Tom Hanks, Austin Butler, congratulations on Elvis. It's an incredible <laughs> movie. Congratulations, good to It's you. incredible. But uh, tell me, like, what does Elvis mean to both of you? Before you started this project, Tom is someone who lived through his career, and Austin, someone who was born like more than a decade mm. after I'll he died. I'll go first, because, go first. He, because he, had to, he had to go back from the get-go. When mm. I was growing up, Elvis was already done. He was um, uh, uh, the, the, the great 1956 Elvis of, uh, of the rock and roll. Like me. That was nine years, really, before I became a conscious human being. And Elvis was a guy who was in really lousy movies about every third week in the United States. I saw him as a guy who was in silly movies with greasy hair that I understood he did rock and roll back in the day before, before the Beatles did. And I just thought he was already... Um, uh, I thought he was done. I thought he was like as, about as hip as, uh, you know, Forrest Tucker or Milton Berle. He was somebody from the 1950s and he didn't mean anything, anything to me. That being said, when I saw Viva Las Vegas on TV, I thought that was a pretty great movie. I thought that was a pretty great movie. But he was always a guy playing a, lip syncing a song, playing a guy who drove a racing car in the day and sang in nightclubs at night. And I never, never really bought him as anything other than a guy who was sort of like a, a, a celebrity based on something he had done much earlier that didn't mean anything to him. And Austin, so you were even further dislocated from the glory days of Elvis. So what did he mean to you? I grew up around my grandmother, who was in high school in 56. So I wasn't familiar with the 70s Elvis. I was more familiar with Heartbreak Hotel, Blue Suede Shoes, 56 Elvis, you know? And, uh, and so that early 50s, like the Rebel Elvis was actually what I was a little bit more familiar with through my grandmother. And I'd seen King Creole, and I'd seen Viva Las Vegas, and, and GI Blues, and a couple other films. Um, but I didn't know anything about his life. So the, the great joys to me were behind all these ideas of him, because you also like, you can't help but know the Halloween costume version of him mm, yeah. and people's idea of him. So for me, that was just such a joy to strip all that away and see who is this man and, and where did he really come from? Because he didn't just come from nowhere. And, and so to put it into context and to, and to, um, and then also to become more familiar with the music of the late 60s and the 70s, which is some of the greatest music ever recorded. Um, like the grit in his voice of 68. Oh God. Like, oh, it's the most, like, it's just so raw. And then the 70s music, I didn't realize how much I liked the big band sound. And now that, that like, if, if I'm having a bad day, I pop on some of that music and it makes me so happy. And it's fascinating to me the different experience that you had building these characters from a research perspective. So you had to go through a mountain, like a, almost a literal mountain mm. of material, and then you're dealing with somebody who's mysterious, deliberately so. So can you tell me, I guess, how you found things that, that jumped out at you and you thought, you know what, this is critically important to, to building this, this person that I'm going to depict on screen. And then for you, Tom, like, how did you how did you go about finding any information about Tom Parker? Yeah, go for it. I'll take it. Uh, you yeah. just talk. Yeah, beauty, um, beauty before age. Uh, when when <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, uh, when Bass came in to talk to me for the very first time, and he said, "They're Colonel Tom Parker." I said, "Look, I have to say, I don't have any idea what Colonel Tom Parker looked like. I've never seen a photograph of him. I don't know what he sounded like. He was just a guy. He was just a thing." He was my destiny. Uh, technical advisor, Colonel Tom Parker, that's it. I'd never seen him represented in any of the fictitious versions of Elvis. I'd never seen him in any of the documentaries of him, like This is Elvis or Aloha from Hawaii or something. Nothing. So then when I saw a photograph of him, I said, well, are you sure you want me in this thing? Because this is, if you're going to do to, for Colonel Tom Parker, what you're going to do for Elvis was just go back and, you know, try to make this incarnation of him. That's a substantial redo of what you got in me. And I thought that was, that, that was the immediate challenge from all of us. So, yes, we're going to do the makeup job. And, yes, when he played me his voice, I was flummoxed because what is this odd accent? You. Tragedy. But it has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with us. Colonel Tom Parker should have a southern accent. 
Yes. He does not. He has this other odd thing. The bastardized Dutch thing. Oh, well, as as Baz said, he was never a colonel. His name wasn't Tom. He, he wasn't even a Parker. His name was a Andreas van Kuyk, and he was from Holland for crying out. Well, how do you incorporate that into the Elvis of it all? Um, but that was the new thing that this movie was going to have, along with the great sacrificial lamb that Elvis, mm -hmm. Elvis Presley was to American culture and the great Rubicon that he presented as, as to this dangerous concept of giving a new generation their own everything, mm -hmm. their own sound, their own look, their own vibe, their own mm -hmm. freedom that, uh, that Elvis brought forth. And when, with mm -hmm. that kind of like combination, I just said, Please feed me anything you may have, which compared to the mountain of research, mm -hmm. mountain of stuff that they had on Elvis, I had a relative trickle, but it was a powerful trickle of stuff that I got from them. So uh, I, I felt I felt lucky that I got to recreate somebody that no one really knew anything about. Whereas, yeah, it, it it's there's a mountain out there, and every time I would think I'd seen everything, suddenly I would see another video. Or I'd, or I'd hear. You know, I'd find some archive that a fan had compiled and, and there was an audio recording of uh, one of his girlfriends accusing him of cheating on her on mm. the phone. And like little things like that were, anytime I found that my hairs would stand up and I'd find these moments of truth. And uh, it, it's tricky because you, you're, I read every book. I didn't want to leave any stone unturned, so I, I read every book that was written on his life and watched everything, listened to everything, and um, and then I'd find certain things that really rung true and that, that I could then c kind of hold on to, like these life rafts that became these real keys into his humanity. I can't move, I can't sing. And so for me, I just, I really followed my curiosity for two years, and. I just didn't do anything else, and it was, it was the greatest time. Well, it's, you spent so much time with this character, preparing it and then bringing it to screen. But the concert scenes in particular, I thought, were just phenomenal. Uh, and you talk about, you know, like the, the tone in Elvis's voice in 68, yeah. and then some of those later shows right towards the end as well. Like, to me, there was something in his voice. Like, he was, it was, I don't know if it was desperation or whatever it was, but it felt like he was singing as if his life depended on mm. it. Because uh, mm. it did, I guess. And I, I felt that you did such a great job of capturing that. Like, what were you oh, thinking you. in those moments, like acting, singing, the dance moves? There's a lot going on there. Like, I guess, how did you how did you hone in on that aspect of the performance? Well, I, I think that that was the that was the core is finding what subjectively finding that feeling inside, you know, rather than seeing him from the outside, but f but trying to as much as I could feel what his soul was going through at any one point. But it's a tricky balancing act because you want to be incredibly specific. So th there's a lot of technical things that are involved of, of, you know, spending hours just watching what his hand's doing and just trying to get as very specific as possible. But for me, it was, it was doing that so much that when I was on set, I wasn't having to think about that. And it was just feeling the raw emotion of it. Um, and sometimes then, you know, I'd watch playback and I'd have to hone something in a little bit. But, um, but it was, it was really just doing all the work as much as I could ahead of time, so that way when I showed up, I could just feel like I was living and doing it for the first time. And there's a physicality to it as well, right? And I oh, wondered, man. you know, that, <laughs> I often wondered, you know, what happened, <laughs> yeah, what, what, what happened after one of those sort of, sort of concert scenes when Baz says, that was great, you know, let's go again, and it's the seventh. And it's the seventh time. When did Baz not say that? When did Baz? <laughs> okay, did one great, we're done. We got it. We're fine. He never said yeah, anything. He, he but. likes to do a lot of takes. Uh, you the know, sweat was real then. Is what the you're sweat saying. was real. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's it, there's moments where you feel like collapsing afterwards, but it also you only get one time in your life to put on Elvis's clothes and and be that. You know, so. There was, it was incredibly, there's moments of exhaustion, but uh, it, it's so exhilarating that you, you, there would be moments I would think, I can't maybe walk out on stage again, but then you do it and you get out there and suddenly it's, you're finding new things and it's incredibly exhilarating. 
And what are you thinking, Tom, while this is happening? Because just like the Colonel, you're your side I'm of stage. I'm a crazy fan. You, you're, <laughs> you're watching. You're watching this. Well, the the first uh, um, our first scene together was actually uh, in the '68 Comeback yeah. Special, and, and it was a relatively intimate scene. It was us uh, talking in his dressing room. But uh, the prior to that, I just went by to, you know. To, Let's go fly the flag at the set. You know, I'll be there tomorrow. And he was in the black leather suit for the 1968 comeback special. And to me, that that is the epitome of of Elvis. That w everything that was incorporated into that comeback. I mean, it was the comeback special where Elvis essentially redefined himself and also brought with him everything that he had meant since 1956. Um, between that and the Las Vegas appearances, let me, let me just say that anytime someone comes up to you and said, oh, you're in the Elvis movie, if they saw Elvis, they say, you know, I saw Elvis in Meridian, Mississippi in 1972, or I saw Elvis in Las Vegas during his third year there, or I saw, you know, everybody remembers where they were and what, you know, they remember seeing Elvis kind of like they remember seeing, you know, the, uh, you know, the the rising of the Holy Spirit. You're, you know, the, you know, I saw the Virgin Mary, you know, it was, it was kind of like that. Um, and so to be there, uh, we were separated because of a COVID protocol, so we never saw each other prior to the shot. Suit. I would be in my full-on colonel outfit uh, and would get to the set and then he would, and in the course of Las Vegas, he showed up behind a rising, you know, gold curtain and everybody going nuts. And we must have did it 40 times that day. And then he would go off and sing. And every time it happened, I felt like I had been transported back through time. I was watching the real Elvis Presley. He was incredibly excited. And I'm not just speaking for myself. The 200 extras that were there as well experienced it again and again. Yeah. Well, that's the experience of the audience, watching the film as well. But we're running out of time. So let's let's get into a rapid-fire round. Favorite Elvis song and why? <laughs> we always well, I know. We always way. go there. I can never answer that question. You got too many uh, favorites. Today, a uh, feeling in my body uh, makes me so happy. And it just, it was one of those songs I didn't know that he sang. And the first time I heard it, I thought, this is Elvis. Mm. Uh, so, so it kind of, it, it defined a moment of me discovering new Elvis music that I never knew existed. Restaurants with my brother putting quarters in the jukebox to hear U.S. Mail. Uh, Don't temper with the pump of tea, <laughs> of the U.S. Mail. We loved it. We would sing it. Don't temper with the pump of tea, of the U.S. Mail. Bacon, peanut butter, and banana sandwiches, yes or no? Yeah. I, can't, I can't see the peanut butter. I mean, I can't see the banana in there. I, I, oh, you don't like the banana? Well, no, I don't. I think it does it go with bacon and, and peanut butter. Did you, did you eat one as part of your yeah, research of process? Yeah, I think they're delicious. <laughs> yeah. you st you still, your waistline looks fantastic. Though, so, it's <laughs> a, you. so maybe you cut down. Yeah, That's good. And, uh, and, and finally, Elvis movies. Like, do you, do you have a favorite? King Creole, I think, for me. You know, there were he made three pretty serious movies after he came back from, oh, uh, yeah. from the Army. Wild in the Country, uh, Wild in the country I think, is movie. is great. And here's the sad thing about it. It was a bomb. Mm -hmm. it, it was a box office disaster. And it, that that was the, perhaps more than anything yeah. else that sealed a fate of Elvis. Always having to be Elvis in a movie, always having to sing, mm -hmm. and always having to be charming because uh, he was a great actor in the four movies before he went into the uh, army. And he was a great actor, I think, in three movies afterwards, but they didn't do the box mm -hmm. office that would have generated his to have a different sort of career. Mm. Mm. Tom, Austin, it's a treat to talk to you. Good time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Elvis Presley. Here you go.